the matter uh, further by getting a second opinion. So, um, it's over to you. Do, do you want us to get a second opinion? Who wants us to get a second opinion? No. This is the original one. No, I, th I think what happened, I'm, 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 I'm led to believe it went to another solicitor. Why did it go to the solicitor? He's right when you say, looked at the course you did in the condition of the which is no window for you. Yeah, that wasn't a second opinion though, was it? No, no, no. No, that's not a second opinion. They were instructed by the... the well, uh, they haven't been acting for the supporters. Yeah. Looked and forced to be acting for the Curry Young, who are the administrators of the liquidators, as the Bradley 2001. So they've not been acting for us at all. The question is then, my question, Mark. So my question really would be if they've been acting on behalf of the administrators, if we as supporters want a second opinion, do we have su sufficient information to enable to actually make an objective view? Well, we can ask for that information, can't we? Well, that's one of the things I've said to Mark. It's about the financial side of it. But if you're going to get a second opinion, to me, you've got to go and speak to a solicitor to start off with and explain to them and see if they'd be willing to take it on. The second thing is obviously the cost. And the third thing is where do we get the documentation from? Because obviously, we don't have it. Uh, it's a guess, it's Curry Young, and obviously, looked unfortunately. And the fourth thing is, do we actually have the right to apply for it? I think my view to that would be, first thing is to ask him. Because if we can't get the information, we're dead in the water, really, as I see it. We don't have any documents at all. Well, no, but if we ask them for the information, if they're willing to give it to us, then maybe we've got something to proceed with. But without it, we've got nothing. So, we either we draw a line on it, or the supporters club can write to Corey Young asking them for a copy of the information. It's going to be, it's going to be a substantial amount of documentation. Yeah. We, we can ask for that, can't we? Are we entitled to a freedom of information? Well, what I, what I did suggest was that perhaps maybe under the freedom of information we could challenge or find out what uh, Steve Curry's thinking is and how he's arrived at the decision not to uh, just carry on. Yeah. I mean, on a, on a personal note, right, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't here on the, on the night and the minutes, of the, the minutes of the AGM that happened that night on, on, on that said that the investigation is still ongoing. Pete Williams has met with the police and they are committed to help in any way. Uh, Deakin and Miller are liable and an investigation into bankruptcy proceedings is ongoing. To proceed with this, we need £6,000. Liquidators will not demand a fee for doing so. Members of the support club voted in favour of assisting to collect funds. If successful, all money will come back into the supporters club. So we've, ra we've, ra we've raised, um, we haven't raised 6000 but we've raised um, some money. We've paid some court fees out, we've had some money back. Um, it ain't going to cost us any money to write a letter asking what our options are. So we can either do that, um, and to be fair as well, Pete Williams has worked on this for seven years, along with Phil, isn't here tonight, he's on holiday. I think it would be wrong of us to close it down without him being here. Um, you know, I wasn't the chair at the time. Um, I, I'm just throwing that out to you because it's your guy, you guys vote on these things. So we can write to the, the liquidator. Um, there's no harm in that. We're not going to make a decision tonight because we'll be all night deciding what happens with this, that, the other. So I think out of respect for the seven years that Pete has put his life on hold fighting this, I, I don't think another month of writing a letter to find out where we are is, is a bad thing. 
What, what do you think? We're in a no-lose situation, whichever way we go. Yeah. And I think a letter, we don't even need to wait for people to back. If we can write a letter to the Korean and ask them for the information and if they can give us their reasoning for not to, uh, for, for saying there was nowhere else to go. If we wait till that letter comes back and then decide where we go. Yeah. But I don't think it takes anything to write a letter and, and ask for the information and the paperwork. And, you know, without sounding, sounding um, bad, there's only one person asked for the money back. And I suppose a month, um, I mean, it was it was signed off as a true record, but the money came back at the sports club, you know, and then the sports club decided what they wanted to do with it, the members, you guys, not us. So, um, one person's asked for the money back. I mean, we, well, From my memory on that, when I donated on there, it was actually sold on that, that the donations were to be given for that fund that would be returned to the people who donated it if, uh, if there was nowhere to go. Right. So I would not have a, a, a problem. I know with mine it's you can go back into the support club, no problem. But yeah. I don't think we've got a leg to stand on in reality. If everyone was told the same thing I was. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I wasn't the chair at the time. I wasn't at the meeting, but that's the only documentation we've well, we got. Can ask Ali, I think. Yes. Yeah. I think I've still got my receipt. Yeah. That I've kept in my wallet all these years. And I'm fairly sure it was signed by Ali. Was there only a few percent? Exactly, I've got the receipt, but it, it isn't signed, but I'm fairly sure it was Ali. So yeah. I'll ask Ali for yeah. her, what she remembers on the. Well, I spoke to Ali. I spoke to Ali today, and Ali sent me the minutes from that meeting. So we can go back and clarify that. Um, we can also write the letter, um, but we need you guys to give us that authority to do that. Yeah, sorry, Mal. No, I just made the point that some of the money has been spent. So anybody who donated, you can't give everybody the money back because some of it's been spent. So no, if you go, whoever it says, I think it's a thousand pound of the right mark that we're talking yeah. on this. Yeah, yeah. If we've spent. 20% of the money, then she gets 20%, yeah. so 80% back in the money. Okay, so all those in favour of writing to the um, liquidators and giving Pete the opportunity to come um, to the next meeting if he can make it, uh, can you give us a show of hands? Anybody against? So that's unanimously voted. So we'll write a letter to the, the um, the, the, um, the liquidator will find out and we'll come back to you with what, what their, their, their feelings are. Um, so that's that. Just before we close the AGM and invite Carol and the team in. Um, any other business anywhere? Yeah. Sorry for the delay, Mark, and your committee members. Uh, lifetime members, Mr. John Rudge, that's standard. Um, this year, 40 years to speed. Uh, you know, I mean, he's here, warning, some dust. Yeah. John Rudge is on a different level. Steve Speed is on another level. Yeah. So, lifetime members, as far as I'm concerned, is we've got a groundsman that's done a facilities manager job. He's got a stage of manager's job. Of course, he's, he, you know, we've got Wembley out there, Wembley at the north. So please understand that Steve Speed is, you know, he's up there. Like that. That's my personal opinion. Um, everybody's entitled to an opinion. And um, there you go. That's it. Well, I can see you <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but also, I, I go, I, I sit in the back row. I don't come to this club just panting, fickling the ground, going to the game. But the veiled legend comes and sits in the next to the last piece of the day. Harry Poole, he never misses his own game, as a good deal in the gym, late 80s. Veiled legend, veiled player. Uh, this, he could be for a lifetime. 
something that you know you, you can propose to the floor um, and, and we can we can do that kind of thing. Can we do that this evening please? Yeah. Or do we have to do that as a support to support people? Or well, can we do that now and carry the vote forward? We can, we can do that now but what we, have, what we have to do and what we have to really do and and, and I'm not being horrible or, or disrespectful, no, what we have to do is we have to draw a line on how many per year because um, it means, you know, it's, 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 you know, if we give, if we save one person, then another person, and then you can add five other people, and that, that was, that was, you know. Yeah, more, at the same time, there's two pivotal people here, John Wood, and Mr. Steve, they're the two pivotal people that uh, this club has been leveled on. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't mind you saying that. It doesn't come from the management or the directorship or it comes from an individual that's got knowledge, the groundsmanship and so on and so forth, then as far as I'm concerned, that's my opinion, and my opinion only, John Rudge to his feet and say rep. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> just, to interject even further. This is a supporters club, not yeah. a, an employees club. Exactly. And you could look at Steve Speed being an employee, yeah. John Rudge being an employee for many years. And if this is a supporter, then we look at supporters, and Harry Poole is a good shout, but I could also say Jeff Howell. Yeah. There, yeah. Are, there are other people. There's yeah. even Phil. You know, it's a historian of the club. <laughs> we can, he should be, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> Have at the next uh, supporters meeting, yep. have people put forward and vote on them. Yeah, yeah we could do and that. That's the fairest way of deciding who's going to be the one, because it can only be one, two maximum. There could be two, two maximum. Well, to be fair, the reason why why um, that we proposed John Rudge for that was was because when we saw the badge and he got flat cap on. And, and, I, and I spoke to I spoke to a few people. Um, I think he's always been like a, a a massive legend here, and you know he's and he always will be. And I just thought it was a nice thing for us to do. And to be fair, when he came to the meeting last year, I can't wait to have a night with him because he was absolutely brilliant. Some of the stories he was telling. Um, but as a as a you know I can you know you're a lifetime member, Jeff. How do you feel about all these nominations? I think I think one thing as well with what we, we need to do because I know that they, they were treated shambolically last you know the last few years. I think that the ex-players association um, that should be that should be reinvented and they should be welcomed here with open arms, not thrown out on the car park. So, Mickey, 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 
Adam Yates is to assure me that he is the person that's being put in charge of bringing that back. Right. He hasn't done it yet because he's been tied up with other things, but he's in, he, it has been granted, obviously by the family here, that they want, to be, they want them back, and he, he is in the moment, at the moment, he's in, he's in the progress of getting it moving. Okay. It's already, he's already got, it's already been done, but he's got to do it. He's Fantastic. got to do it. Well, for the record, the, the, um, the way that the, the ex-players were treated by our previous owner, was an absolute disgrace. Absolutely disgraceful. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, so what we can do is we can, we, we've, we've put John Woods forward tonight. Um, we, can, we can take the other names to the next meeting, else we'll be here all night. And, and you know, you can email in your, your names and we can discuss that at the next meeting. And it's a great, great topic of debate um, and, and that'll be good. So if you, we'll put that down. We'll put those two names down and we'll discuss that at the next meeting. Is everybody happy with that? Yeah. Yeah? Fine. Any other business anywhere else? On, on the ex players, Mickey Porter is the current chairman. Okay. Right, okay. Brilliant, thank you. Any, any other business anywhere else? No? AGM closed. Next AGM is um, Thursday, the 30th July 2020. Okay, so um, we'll have a quick five minutes and Carol and the team will get come in and they'll answer your questions, anything you've got. Alright, so go get yourself a drink and then we'll be back in five minutes. Right.
Okay, we're ready to go, folks. Are you sitting down? Eyes tight, seatbelt's fine. Just to let you know if there's any emergency, we're not expecting a fire alarm. The fire doors are there, there, and you know where the car park is. So, we've done the AGM. I've just told Carl she stuck with me for another year. She said that's okay, but it's nice for you to come along tonight. Um, when, we, when we told them about the AGM, they said they could have it in here, it'd be great. Um, and it's really nice that um, I think you'll all agree that walking in this club only 11 weeks into their tenure, it's a completely different place, different atmosphere, lovely painting done by Dicko and all the other volunteers, so it's, it's really nice to see. So tonight is for all these guys to introduce themselves to you, because some of them you've not seen before, some of them you have, and um, they're going to go down and introduce themselves from Yatesy Land, and then Carl's going to say a few words, and then questions for, from the floor. Adam Yates. <laughs> <laughs> so I work, I'm work employed at Synaptics, I work for the Hub Foundation, which Carol and Kevin set up. Um, so I work through Synaptics, the Hub Foundation, the Paul Bell Foundation, and the football club. So at the moment, I'm trying to get some of the contacts in around the city to, to get to rebuild the relationship between them and the football club. Um, some of them have been tarnished, as you could expect in the past. Um, and then being a bit of a liaison between the play inside, uh, the players, the management, and upstairs. Hello, everybody. I'm Sue Fox. I'm Wales for four six years. Long friend of Carol's, and I'm come as a customer relation. So you can send all your emails to me, and we'll try and sort them out. <laughs> Hello, I'm Francesca Shanahan, Carol Kevin's youngest. Um, I'm just working in temporary over the summer uh, in between uni, trying to set up a reception role, um, which is turning out to be a bit more broad than I thought, and there's different areas of people who just need everyday admin support as well, so making sure that I can try and provide that for them. I'm Steve Brown, I'm the stadium manager. Rail fan. Rail fan for 43 years. Uh, supported the club, worked on the ground for many years. With CJ Bailey, got this grocery statue. We've got this email uh, memorial from Burslem. And like Chris, we've got a lot of love for the club. So. I'm Kate Beardmore, I'm the eldest of the uh, Shanahan children. Um, I am one of the directors over at Synectics, um, and I am getting more involved uh, in Vail. Uh, first sort of bit that we're really looking at is uh, helping generate more income um, and making sure that we're maximising all of the uh, amazing opportunity um, at Vail Park, um, and also trying to help a little bit with, um, I look after the uh, the people side over at Synectic, so we're trying to bring some of the ethos that we've got at Synectic over into Vale, starting a little bit with some communications and just like a sort of bit small with like a newsletter for the internally for the staff, which they don't know about, but they probably do now, um, and just uh, trying to help in any way that we can. Evening, one and all. Lovely to see your smiling faces. Uh, I've been honoured to say a few words. I just look round and think it's a 
amazing. There appears to be the old smile or two about the place. That doesn't seem quite right, does it? Doing smiling. Um, I've just got a feeling in my waters that we're going to have a, a really exciting season. God knows what's going to do. Carol and I spent uh, about five or six days up in Scotland with the team and all the managers and this sort of thing, and it was very uplifting. Uh, we got to the stage where there were quite a lot of laughs going on, so I thought well, that's very positive, and uh, we had a great time. So we're, we're down here now to try and help in any way that we can. That's no doubt to you to make this place fly, but start, we're starting to see all sorts of changes gradually going around and sort of the paintwork that's being done, the whole place has been smartened up. You know, we're not there yet, but it's, uh, I feel it's very positive to see these steps along the way. Thank you. Hi, One of the changes that you'll see, the reason you have got tables here, is because the dance floor has actually been sanded down and made beautiful, and the gaffer tape the, um, from around the edge it has gone and the gaffer tape from all the steps coming up has gone so there's no room for gaffer tape anymore that's gone. Um, I really want to say thank you to all of these guys for coming in tonight um, and allowing us to introduce you. I also want to say thanks to Max. Max has got back from um, Glasgow today and he's come in to, to live stream that so thanks ever so much Max, I really appreciate that. There's some people that aren't here, which I would have liked to introduce you to, but it's the holiday week, so they're not here. There's a lady called Claire, Claire Halkett, who is our head of people and company operations next door. She's been working here, um, particularly on the list for the, the um, safety certificates. We've had a lot of work to do on the stadium to get, we need a license. Our license is up on the 31st of July and we had a lot of work to do on the stadium to get the license renewed. Um, hopefully we should get that. It's, the last inspection was today and he left the stadium smiling. So that's a good sign. Um, so we should get that. And then we've got the work with the safety advisory group, um, which is the council, the police, the fire, ambulance. Um, and that's where we show that we are compliant with the, the law. In many cases, we weren't. And Steve arrived and got a, a to-do list as long as you're on. And we've been working through that. Um, so I just want to say thank you to everyone. And the volunteers who have come in, I'm, we're just so grateful. Because without those volunteers, we would not be ready for the new season. I'm so pleased that the first game is away, that gives us an extra week, it does give us a trip to Colchester, but it does give us another week to get the stadium right. Um, talking about volunteers, I particularly want to thank Donna, I think Donna's here tonight, front row there, happy birthday Donna. Donna has chosen, this is, now this is a proper male fan, she has chosen to spend her birthday um, helping us in the stadium all day and then this is her birthday party of choice. Um, so thank you Donna very much, she also brought cupcakes in so She's one to stay close to. Um, <laughs> I wanted to just talk a little bit about the trip to Scotland. Uh, Kevin and I were going up there and we were going to stay with the team. We were going to stay in a hotel just down the road. Uh, the hotel was not very good. Really, really wasn't very good. So we decided to move. And John said, well, come to the... Um, what's the, what's the sports, sports centre? that they were staying at. So we actually got, I think it was about four days, um, with the the team, the backroom staff, Max was there, you would have seen some of his films on YouTube. And I just wanted to report back, as a fan as much as anything, just how much pride you would all have had in, uh, in Scotland. It was the attitude of all the players, the discipline of them all. Um, they all wore their training kits the whole time. Jack had a, a trouble keeping them all laundered um, because there wasn't laundry facilities there, but he, he got around that. So they were forever washing and wearing, but they, they, got, they were up at half seven every morning for a run. Then they'd have breakfast, then they'd go and have a full training session in the morning, back for lunch, and then a training session um, in the gym in the, in the afternoon and they really, really worked. The, the 
big table that they all ate at, and we all had our trays. Every day when they'd left, there wasn't a thing on that table. They'd all cleared up after themselves. Um, it was just, you were just really pleased to be, to be part of it. it. It was uplifted, it absolutely was. And also we got to know the behind the scenes staff, so John and Dave, Kevin and Ronnie and you know, all the others. And they're in good hands, the players are in good hands. You know, the, the, the plans that they were coming up for training, we, I mean, we didn't understand it, but it sounded really, really good. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to, to report back on that. And the humour, our gaffer, bless him, A, finally, because I was five minutes late for lunch, he sidled up to me with my tray. Yeah, right yourself. <laughs> right yourself. He just, I was getting enough dinner and he just came up and he says, Carol, you were late. I says, yes, I know, Gaffer. He says, that's a fine. <laughs> yeah, I know, Gaffer. So, he first of all was that I was going to have to watch Love Island and I said, no, I'd rather pay money. Um, <laughs> and we were trying to work out how much I was going to pay, but anyway, last, the night before last, we had a quiz, and, and the team, um, we were Kevin and myself, Dave Kevin and um, Danny Pugh, Manny and Monty, we were the motley crew of the team, and Max's team um, had, it, it was just another team there, and we drew. Um, in this quiz, and then we had a, a tie break, and we just squeezed in because somebody had crossed out one of the answers on Max's teams, and so we got in on this late penalty, um, which meant that we won. And so we decided, to, in all fairness, to put our winnings into the uh, to pay my fine. I said that Kevin would have been fine if he got caught. The only difference was I got caught. Um, and then today, I was just coming back from because I've been to Cardiff today because that's what you do. Um, and uh, I got a text, well, Colin and I got a text from John, and it said, um, we got back at 3.30, everyone's still in good shape, players were a pleasure to be with, I will see you in the morning, nothing pressing at the moment. So I went back and said, uh, with your permission, I'll read that out at the support for meeting tonight, but feel free to change the word if you prefer. He come back, he says, no, that's fine. Just add that the staff and owners were a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> to which Colin goes back, I know John, sorry, I meant to thank you for taking them away for a few days and giving me a bit of peace. Just find the phone on the next trip, please. <laughs> That's what we put in there. Um, but um, yeah, that was it really. Um, anything else? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, this is about the kit. Look, I'm so sorry. I mean, I know that there's been a lot of problems on social media about this, and I've read it, and I've just kept thinking, yeah, you're absolutely right. It has been an absolute pain. Having said that, Araya have been really good to get the kits back as quickly as they have, but we've now had a large number of boxes with the home kit in it. So they're going to put, they're going to close tomorrow afternoon and get that on the shelf, so that will all be for sale on Saturday. So, but um, but thank you all for your for your patience on that because it has been an absolute pain in the backside. Okay, that's only to say. Oh, Tommy Cheagles, um, Synaptics have uh, our finance director Rob for some reason just took it upon himself that Tommy Cheagles would be open by the first uh, day, of the first game, home game for the tenth, and it will be. We've had a new roof put on, so a lot of the leaking has gone, well all the leaking has gone. We've had one of the bars has been taken out, so we've only got the one bar. Um, the pipes, uh, yeah, down the rat man has got rid of rats. The, um, a, rat, a rat has eaten through the beer pipes, so we were looking for drunken rats, which we've had. Um, so they've all gone, so there's no rats, there's nothing there. Um, and well, the, yeah, the carpet's been decleaned, it's been painted, everything's been done there. so. That, that will all, all the electricity has been rewired as well and the plumbing has been replumbed. So there's a lot of work done into that. And then we are now putting that over to the foundation um, as, on a free lease, February free lease. And they have got a grant from Red Industries to do some further work on in there and so they can open it as a community centre. So it will be open as a, um, as a community centre um, during the week, 
and then we'll have access to it on match days and for events by, by arrangement. But it will be predominantly will be a community centre. And that will enable us to do a lot of things. Like people wanted to do a slimming club and things like that, well they'll be able to hold that there. Um, and for the St. toddlers and tea dances and whatever else, youth clubs. Um, so that will be a good facility there. Um, just report back on the tickets. Thank you so much for the season tickets. We've got over 4,000. And that was really put into context for me when um, crew announced last week that they'd sold 2,000. And, and I've been so sort of veil orientated, I haven't looked about what anybody else had done. And so, you know, we've sold twice that many, and that's absolutely fantastic. The ticket office staff have been brilliant, um, and they've just processed everything. And the volunteers doing all the tickets and putting the tickets on the seats and everything, and the envelopes. Yeah. Um, also, we've had a gym put in. So the bottom bit where the concourse was to be for the where there aren't any seats and the North Street, the bit behind that has been cleared out. I think it was on Steve's second day. He just said, right, that's it. Um, three skips or two or three skips later. And um, 60 lights, somebody donated 60 lights and starters. So thank you for that. And the, uh, when's the gym going to be rented? For next Friday, so for the beginning of the season there will be a gym. And talking to the players this week, just it came across just how important that gym is so they can um, use that. And there's also space in there so that Chris, the, the physio, can watch them on the equipment and then make sure that you know, their muscles and whatever you're doing, whatever they're supposed to be doing. Um, so that's really important for them. Um, and thank you, please. What else have we been doing? Um, oh, the painting. And we've now got the, the lines on the car park. Um, so that will be, we'll be able to get more cars on there um, on match days. The old gym. Oh, the, yeah. The old gym, which is down the end, um, that's going to be a media suite. And that will be used for, Max will have that um, for his. Um, <coughs> is media press conferences. At the moment they're just done in a box, so it doesn't look very professional behind it. John thought the one had been done in the toilet, it hadn't, it was in the box. Um, but it really doesn't look very good without the backdrop behind, and so that will be done in there. But it will also be used for um, playbacks, and so when we film matches, we will then play them back to the players, and we'll use that room to do it so that they can actually watch themselves and see how they could improve. Um, yeah, that, just going back to Scotland on that, we had a, a, a chap come in and do a talk on Monday night, which was really good, and the things that were coming out on there is just how much the mental and emotional side is important in football, and but we only focus on physical, so we train people on the physical side, but we don't do anything on the emotional. And we do a lot next door in Spectic, so we're doing, taking a lot of our learning and development um, and leadership and training and things like that from Synectics and we're going to be bringing that uh, into the club and working first of all with the backroom staff so that they've been trained and then we'll do it with the players. On the second night, the Dave and John asked if Kevin and I would do a talk to the players. So we did an hour talking about us and why we bought the veil and with what our vision was uh, for them and for the club as a whole. And you know, we really held their attention for an hour, didn't we? So I was, uh, I was really pleased. And then the number of players that came up to me the next day and were very engaged. And what I was talking about was about Burslem and about the whole area up here and how if we really want to regenerate this area and bring the feel good factor, then we'll do it by they'll be successful and just how important they are in that role of making this area successful and I was telling them that I gave the prizes out at a local school um, secondary school a couple of weeks ago and the head said to me that given you know, in the time that we've been here it's actually had a really positive effect within their school that there was this real positive feeling um, just within the, the kids and the staff and he thanked us very much. And I think we forget sometimes that we, you know, we think that it's just us and a few matches and, and the, the 
the hour effect finishes at Hamill Road, and it really doesn't. It, it does permeate out into the local area, and the players are very keen on becoming more involved in the community. Joe and Wally will be delighted to know that the players are really keen on um, becoming more involved in the community. Joan and I have talked about this for years, it's been a dream of ours, and uh, it will happen. So I think that's, oh, I'm going to get the question. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. When John um, spoke to me on the phone about the, the hotel or the uh, sports centre, he said that the, um, the rooms were really good, nice and clean, and he said, and the food is as good as at the club. And I went, wow, that's brilliant. That is now the benchmark of, of how good it should be. And the Scott, who's uh, one of our chefs next door, has come over and he's worked very closely with the players and again the backroom staff on, on food and they now get breakfast and lunch here and we also trialled when they after the match on after Burnley match on Saturday they then drove up to, to Scotland. We trialled sending food with them so that they have food on um, in the coach after an away match. Um, it was a chicken pasta chicken pesto. And uh, that went down really well with the, with the players, they, they like that. So that's an area that we're, we're really developing. So, sorry, is that a question? <laughs> so that's, unless I get a little thump to the side, that's, uh, uh, that's my report to you. Um, but happy to, all of us are happy to have this, uh, especially Steve, it's really, to be cut. Steve can't stay too long because he's going to become a grandfather again. Um, unless he's going to become before too long. So. I think we're, we're in labour as we speak. Where are we up to with the sponsoring of the stands? Right, the sponsoring of the shirts, as you've all seen, was the Nectix because we didn't have time to, to do anything else. Uh, AutoNet have got the away ends, which has been brilliant. Ian Donaldson is very keen on... Um, in fact, we must thank Ian and Mick. It's John because they have um, decorated the box for Autonet down here. They've also, um, as a gift to us, redecorated the director's box upstairs. So a real public thank you to them. The, um, the contract was already in place for the railway and bypass for another year, so that will come off next year. And at the moment, we, we came ever up there, but we're actually looking for another sponsor for Lawn Street. So if you know anybody who would like to sponsor Lawn Street, please let us know. We would be very grateful. But that's, that's where we're up to on, on that. No one's asked me about Norman saying in the Nottingham paper today about having a significant investment. I know somebody wants to ask the question, so I'll answer it anyway. Um, the reason that Norman will have said that is that, and I think I, we covered this when we first bought the club, so this isn't news, it's just a, a reiteration, is because we were buying the freehold of the grounds as well, Norman offered that we could pay that element a, a little bit more than that over a period of three years, uh, which we accepted because we knew that we would need money up front to do the work that we needed to do. And so um, that's all set up. If, as long as we pay, make those monthly payments and there's no reason why we shouldn't because the money's in one side ready to make those payments, then uh, Norman has no, no, um, pull over, no, no claim over Vale Park whatsoever. The lead did say that because um, we still had to pay that money to him because it was a, a payment plan that he wouldn't be able to have a, a financial uh, interest in any other Lead club um, for, the, for the three years while that payment plan is in place. So the, the, there is, a, I think the, I don't know whether the word it has been misquoted, but it, it said something about a significant investment. There isn't a significant investment at all. So we address the safety of all the other lead clubs. Can you string it out a bit longer? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry, yeah, question. Sorry, I was going to say, um, did it say to assume that 
now you've got the gym where the concourse would be in far times more. Yeah. There's absolutely no chance we're going to get seats in there now. No, do you want to answer that thing? It's an old way of shop. It's an old way of shop. Or is, it, or is the, the gym in a different place than where the concourse is? The gym's actually in the front end of the sh where the old shop was, so the, right. the, the, the other part of that is a store full of veggies, tiles, lots of stuff in there, that would be the main way through and it'll come round to the back of the gym so there'll still be that area to use to get so there's still to be enough room there yeah. for a comp. Yeah. Yes, yes. The second question on that is as far as the seating in the floor is concerned, there are seats at the back. Is it not possible that they could be used as a family area? Not at the minute. Or would that the facilities have got to go in first before the seats can be used. That was one of the things that the SAG sort of told could be used to stand at the minute. So until the facilities go in there, toilets, turnstiles, then that, that won't be used at the minute. So. Who is the guest, sorry? Who is the guest area underneath where the president seats are? Um, surely the people in the guest area could move to one of those areas there because those people actually come from upstairs. Is this to the right of the tunnel as you live in that it? The seats there. That's the players area the minute. Yeah. We've been told that they can't sit in there, so they won't be sitting in there. We can't use that area the minute. Can't use it at all. No, not at all. One of the things we do want to do is to, um, because there's some seats that have been put there just so it looks better, but yeah. they're new seats. And yet we're getting a report from the SAG that a lot of the seats around the stadium have perished and have to be replaced. So what we'll probably do when we get time, um, because it's, it's not a priority, is we will take those seats, those new seats, and put them where people are actually going to sit on them. And the seats that aren't good enough to sit on will look okay. We can then put into there if we want to make it look better. Um, but it just seems silly to me that we've got seats that have perished and yet we've got brand new seats that we can use. Um, there's still some more new seats, aren't there, to, to go out. And we were going to do that before the new season, but to be honest, we've really had to prioritise what do we need to do. If anybody just reads my report in the Sentinel tonight, you know, I said, I know a lot more about toilets than I ever thought I needed to know. I know an awful lot more about urinals than I ever wanted to know. Boy, you men are high maintenance. Um, but, uh, that was an important part of the SAG, so we've, uh, we've done a lot of work on that. Oh yeah, the season tickets are going to be um, given out next week. Um, I think it's the 31st, isn't it? I think um, we'll have to confirm. I've asked if the season tickets can be distributed from in here rather than at the shop because I just thought it would be better if we had the tables here um, laid out so we're not just doing a big queue from the from the shop. I worried you might get wet now, I worried you might get sunburned, but that's this country for you. Um, but I just thought it would be, be nicer for people to come up here and I don't know whether there'll be players about, if there are, they'll happily come and, and say hello. John would have come to the meeting tonight, um, but I said not to um, because he's John, no, John um, Askey, uh, because he's just got back from Scotland and he's got training tomorrow. And, um, but he'll come, he's happy to come to supporters club meetings. Um, Colin is, but I said that I felt he'd done his turn in those. And he's just come back from London today. He's been at an FA um, meeting and he managed to talk about the holiday programme. So he talked about the holiday programme in the FA Council um, and about the work we were doing, which is great because that again is, is pushing the, the positive work that's coming out of our park. Um, one of the other things that we've done is we have a chaplain at the moment, John, and we're keeping John, John's great, um, but we want to bring some support for him. So instead of having a chaplain, we're going to have a chaplain C, which means we've got more than one. And Ashley Cooper, who was at the Swan Bank, um, whose local lads fell through and through. He now runs Cliff College in Sheffield, which is the lay college um, for the, the, the Methodist Church. He's going to work with John um, as chaplain for, for the club. Um, we've spoken to John Rudge. He's going to be involved um, next year. That's going to carry on. 
uh, which we were pleased about. John Askey wanted John Rush to, to carry on doing that. Um, who else have we, have we bringing in? Anybody else? The mayor, the main, main ones that wanted to, to say. But, yeah, and I just, I put a plea out on Facebook for more people to become involved with the supporters club because you guys are going to be a, a lot more part of the club than you have been. We want to bring the whole of Port Vale family together, whether it's the foundation, the academy, the players, the staff, um, just on the staff. Um, the, the Vale staff have been amazing on, you know, because we've come in um, you know, as selecting staff and we've done a bit of a, a selecting sort of push into the, into the club to bring the the, the selectics culture in, and that means a lot of change um, for the for the existing staff. So we should look back there. Um, but yeah, well, that's one of those subjects I can now talk about for hours. Um, which you will not have. And do now. <laughs> well, actually, I've all long time I've talked about Bob Bell for hours. Um, we now do something with it as well, though. Um, yeah. So oh, my son, by the way, who can't be here tonight, Patrick, he's been involved. So he's worked in the ticket office. He's also um, worked in the shop. He's he qualified as a yoga teacher in February, and um, he's going to be helping. Um, so the players are now doing yoga, and uh, so he's going to be involved in that. John went to watch. Oh, and the full shadow hand um, offspring. Because it, it is a family education. Um, Rosie is uh, so there's Kate, then Rose, then Patrick, then Francesca. Um, Rosie has just graduated and got a master's in finance at the business school. She's going to be. She works with our finance director at Synetics, and she's also going to work with Tracy Carter. Um, here, Tracy's been ill and she's been in hospital, so. I just want to send our, our love to her and um, Rose will be, be working with Tracy to, to keep our accounts squeaky clean. <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if we can find them. <laughs> I've been at Cardiff all day on a Synetics meeting. And I was in Glasgow yesterday in May, so you know it's a, it is a bit like that for me personally. But we we wanted the club for three years, so for three years we've been putting, well, Kate in particular, for three years has always said it's an if, not a when. So it's a when, not an if. That's the right way around, isn't it? And um, so she's been putting the plans in place for three years, so that the selected staff that would need to come and be involved here, because we're also HR. Marion, who I haven't mentioned, or have Marion's a sister. Um, so she's been putting things in place so she can be the solicitor for both. So she's the full bail solicitor. Just to keep it clear, there's eight directors. There's eight directors next door. So it's not as though there's suddenly like two people do everything. It's, uh, it's good. There's another. Yes, Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just pick up on um, what you're saying about the players doing this to remain out I knew you would ask a question on that, generally. <laughs> because I just feel that um, at the sports club early on, I think this, it was more to say, oh, it's a new year of the sports club. And the sports club is really going to be crucial in getting all the contacts that you need, including the sponsorship. So as well as the volunteers, it's kind of going on to a different level. So I suppose it just, the question really is to what message is everybody here? Because we've all got contacts, we all know that well, on the simple level, by bringing people to the to the games, we're ha going to hold a sponsors dinner here in September to invite people who are likely to sponsor. I really, really want to get the Robbie Williams suite going upstairs. I cannot for the life of me 
think why it's not been developed in all of these years, I really can't. But it's it's an amazing room, and you know we've sold out of boxes, we've sold out of presidencies, we've got a queue for both, and I'm sure that if we can get the Robin Williams suite up and going as a, as a restaurant. We can't have it for live music because the ceiling's too low, so the acoustics won't work. But if we can get that working as a, uh, a as a restaurant and have the seats put uh, you know, into the, the balcony area, I'm absolutely sure we'd fill that. Because the view up there is fantastic. And so, but we, we can't. We, um, our funds are pretty much tied in getting the, the stadium right and getting the team right. But that is a really nice thing for people to come and get involved in because it's a, you know, you can section it off and you can see and there will be an income related to it. I think for supporters, it is, you know, hold your head up and be proud of being a Vale fan. I think, you know, the days of apologising and Stoke and Trent for being a Vale fan have gone. And <laughs> We had this business meeting in Cardiff and I spent lunch time answering questions about Port Vale. So there's a little enclave of Port Vale fans growing up in Cardiff. You know, and it's just wherever you go, keep banging the drum. But, um, you know, there's everything to be proud. I keep using the word proud, but, but I am, you know. Um, businesses, Adam's been really good. He's worked with Debbie on um, <coughs> bringing in um, sponsorship and really building up the, the relationships. All the relationships are broken. I, Steve sent me a, a voicemail today, didn't you, from somebody who said, you know, the relation, what's it, the relationship uh, with us and the club had, had broken or something, and that they really want us to be back involved. You know, when you're creating something that's good and positive and successful, people want to, it's like a magnet, you know, people want to be, you know, get involved. So even people who've been really upset uh, with, with Vale are now contacting us and said um, we'd now like to come back please. Morland Potteries um, are giving us some mugs to use in our director's room upstairs so that when we've got visiting directors here they'll be using a, a, a Morland uh, Pottery mug and they want to come and be more involved. Um, Staffs Uni, I've got meetings with Staffs Uni on building the relationships up because not only do we want to work with the, with the PFA for the players on working on what the players' future is post-playing, but also we can use here um, for, the, for the uni and the college to provide courses, so we're bringing education into the community, and this is a fantastic facility for doing that. And so I think the, the amount of, of, of functions for the community that Vale Park has, other than football, is, is phenomenal. Um, and yes, the market, we really must get the market when it gets to the top of the list, we really must sort the market out. Um, but I don't think it'll be a problem. If this is about my cost toilets. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but I could ask the rich men to do that. I don't know if that's more soon. Um, no, it's probably if you were thinking of having an open day. I really wanted an open day. I kept on and on and on, I really wanted an open day, and I had to accept that this season, this off post season, we had to focus on getting a safety certificate and a license, and bringing in a new team, bringing in, you know, I mean this room has been painted today, hasn't it, Paul, is it today? That's finished off the room. Yeah, so this, this room's been done today, the, um, Directors, the boardroom and CJ Bailey. Bailey have been done. The boxes have been done. Upstairs has been done. So um, the office, I insisted on the office being done because I wanted it was, it was such a mess that I just felt that if we were going to decorate it, you had to move everything. So if you're going to move it, then you sort it. So the office is now look clean. Um, and organised and fresh, you know, it's a nice environment to work in now. Um, but, so yes, I love an open day. This pre-season has not been the time, but when we can, we will. Just one word, I wouldn't touch the skirting boards, because I think they're still wet. Yeah, we have sticky skirting boards. 
I see the Windsor family over there. Can I thank them as well? I don't know whether Doreen Robbins is here as well. Yeah, they were born embarrassed now. There's no way to embarrass teenage girls than to shout them out. Um, but they were brilliant on the, um, the film that Max did for um, the kit. And so thank you all very much. And you look very smart in your, in your shirts I saw on Facebook. You can ask very hard questions to the others, so don't have to be the main. You just have that. Have you just had this? You haven't. You've given it out. Yeah, I've got a meeting coming up with Payne. Payne's coming in, and we're going to search now. I'm worried about what the announcement's about to do. Um, I really, because we have so many weddings and functions here. That I want to be able to give cards, personalised cards, um, from the staff and from the players, and so Payne's going to do those so that they're really unique to us. Just while I'm talking about life events, we've had two funerals um, that came through here. We had Graham's and we had um, Scooby's, and I was just so blown away with the response. Um, Every player came up off the training ground, uh, every member of staff, we didn't need to ask twice, they just came out and stood there. And it was Francesca who said, after Scoobies, I think it was, and said what a privilege it is to work here, to work at somewhere where you would want to have a drive past for your funeral. And because she was saying, you know, if you worked at Asda for 30 years, you don't say, well, can you just drive past Asda on the way, or can we have one more trip to the office, please? You don't do that, but to come to the Vale, um, it just made you realise just how special a place this is, and uh, we felt really honoured and uh, humbled, really, to, to be able to, to facilitate that. And I have to say, for Scooby's funeral, it was the it was the most uplifting funeral. I mean, I'm sure he would have loved it uh, because the music that was coming out of here in the afternoon. I mean, we were all sort of like this, and then I had to keep saying, "This is a funeral," um, but it wasn't. It was a celebration of a very special man's life um, in the place that he found the most special. So we were we were really pleased to be able to do that. And weddings, great wedding down here. Um, who proved beyond doubt that black, white uh, and gold are the best colours to do a wedding in because it looked amazing. Adam's got to go and let his brother's dog out. So he's getting a little bit worried. So is his brother. His brother's probably looking at the live feed now thinking that damn dog's eating my food. Yeah, I mean, they're not going to disappear off. Um, well, Adam and Steve, who's going to be for the grandpa. We've got grandfather and a dog, we've got to worry about. Um, but uh, we're going to be about for a while, aren't we? Yeah. And uh, if you've got any questions for any of the team, please feel free. But thank you all very much. Out of the 92, you know, we've got the best club. <laughs> So what we'll do now is they'll, they'll mingle around, we're going to get a photograph of these defects um, and then enjoy the rest of your night and thanks Payne. Thank you. And, oh, thanks to Max. Max is coming away from Scotland. Don't be tired. I need some Yeezys. Right, see you later. Thanks very much for coming. Bye.